Hey guys, welcome to the webinar today. Uh, we will get started on time. Let me just set up my computer. Hey, Stefan, how are you, buddy? All right, let me get up the question and answers. And got some charts. Hey, um, hey, bro. All right. Decent results for the crypto system overnight. Decent. Morning, George. Hey, Tony. Me too, man. Me too. It's uh, it's time to get a bit detailed on on this stuff, and uh, oh, it's still six a.m. over here. Um, yeah, it's it's for me. It's time to get really detailed and start really digging into the weeds about how how this stuff really works. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Turn my phone off. Lots of familiar faces. I've, I've actually really, really enjoyed um, relearning about momentum systems because I built a, uh, uh, I was paid to build a momentum system for some stock traders in 2018. 2018? Yeah, 2018. And, uh, I did the research for them and, and did the iteration and, and they got a really great result of it, but I, I've never never revisited. And uh, yeah, it's just the perfect type of system for crypto and I've enjoyed I've enjoyed really diving deep on it. And, and I think you're gonna be uh, really surprised at how we've been able to use the, the new fundamentals that we talked about in the last webinar, the on-chain fundamentals to really improve these systems instead of using things like, you know, 
a 200 period moving average as a trend filter or like, for example, like Ed Sakota does in his systems and 80 period moving average over 140 period moving average. Instead of using like simple stuff like that, we can use like really advanced things and, and give, a, give a level of performance to this that I didn't really think was possible. All right, we will start on time in 45 seconds. I go on. All right, let's kick it off. Welcome everyone to today's webinar. I'm just going to share my screen and let's jump into it. I'm uh, I'm not going to do any sort of preliminary stuff. We're just going to jump into the action. I, I think you guys all know. Uh, uh, I think you guys might all know what the deal is by now. All right, let me just get the chat so I can see it and questions and answered. So this is a continuation of our full webinar series on how to make life-changing money from crypto in 2021 and cash out at the perfect time. Even if you're starting from nothing and you don't know anything about blockchain, you don't know anything about which coins to buy. And I'd like to show you how to do that without relying on luck, without relying on tips without doing like your head in with research and without getting confused. I'm going to show you a really simple and very robust way to trade crypto assets that we can do in the long term. So today's webinar is on momentum, which is the perfect, perfect, perfect edge to exploit for crypto asset trading. And, you know, there's edges, there's all kinds of edges in crypto, like the sentiment edges are very strong. Um, tr trends are incredibly strong. Uh, there's many, many edges that are viable, but this is the best one. I'm going to show you why. So before we decide which type of system is best for trading crypto, we need to first decide, you know, am I going to trade with a system at all? Is that what I want to do? Uh, maybe I just want to be a discretionary trader. I've tried being a discretionary crypto trader. It's kind of fun. It's like really fun, actually. Um, lots of thrill of victory, lots of agony of defeat. Um, in the good times, it's really satisfying. And in the bad times, it's really terrible. So for those who are here watching you, have you tried trading crypto without a system? Um, was it confusing, stressful, difficult to make the decisions? Um, did you experience regret? Any of this, just throw it in the chat. If, if you found it easy to trade crypto, um, discretionary, throw that in the chat too. Simon Spall, yes, yes, and yes. David, horribly taxing. Stu, yes, and stressful as. Rich AI, oh, yes. Um, someone else, no, no, too scared to do it. My point is that even for very good traders, and, and you know, I'm comfortable calling myself a very good trader, um, it's really difficult. It's really hard on the feelings. And uh, this is like an exact photo of me at many times trading crypto and discretionary. Like, does everyone, does anyone know this feel? This feel is very, very familiar to anyone who's trading crypto. And, you know, I'm an experienced trader. Uh, um, and yet being honest, when I trade without a system, most times I seem to fuck it up. And... You know, the fact that crypto when uh, goes in these incredible bull markets, it, it tends to hide shitty trading because, you know, when everything's going up, you can kind of get away with like trading like crap and still make money, uh, kind of, sort of. But when the music stops and the market weather changes, all that sloppy trading practice 
you know, the lack of spreadsheets, the lack of uh, the lack of robust exits, the, the, the relying on opinions, the giving it one more day, the, the no resting stop losses, all that comes back to budgeting us really hard. And, uh, you know, we all know that there's just numberless ways to fuck yourself investing. You know, you can have a trade turn into investment. You can say that stupid thing that I think we've all said, which is I'm just going to hold on until I get my money back. That's fucking retarded, by the way. Um, you could listen to some arsehole like me. I'm an arsehole. I'll tell you when to buy it, tell you which coins I like. doesn't cost me anything. Like, makes me feel good to tell you about all my shit, but I'm not going to tell you when to sell because I'm an arsehole. Like, there's, there's thousands of arseholes just like that, just like me. You don't have to go very far on the internet to find someone with an opinion about a crypto coin. So the truth is... <laughs> The only way that I've found that actually works is to have a set of trading rules and stick to them. And we call that a system. And, you know, like we talked about in the last webinar, the, the usual way is to get some bags of altcoins you like and buy, maybe probably buy some Bitcoin and Ethereum as well and then just, like, hope. Hope it works. Done my research, stick a fork in it. I've got my bags. My bags are filled. I'm just going to hope. And... In a bull market, this isn't the worst strategy ever. It's it's probably going to make money. Um, as long as you can solve the problem, which is figuring out when to sell. And, and I can help you with that, with some data-driven decisions on that. Or I can, and also, I can show you a better way to select your coins, which is what we're talking about today. So some of your coins might moon eventually. And I want you to understand that you're leaving massive amounts of profit on the table. And I don't mean just a little bit of profit, like you can squeeze an extra 20%. You know, you can squeeze an extra 500, 1,000% out of the bull market by, by tra taking it seriously, just doing it properly, like being a professional. So let's look at some of the more popular current coins, the ones that are like everyone loves right now. And I think if I polled around, Polkadot would probably be in the top rank of most people's opinions and this is a chart of polka dot since it was released so it briefly went up when it uh, when it was launched it lost money against bitcoin for most of its life drastically outperformed bitcoin for two months just two months out of its whole life and it's done nothing since then and this is a normal story like this is this this could be the basic bitch of popular altcoins, right? An investment that sucks, it goes down, it does nothing, it's like crappy, you'd be better off owning Bitcoin, and then bam, wow. Fuck, I love this fucking coin. And then it does nothing. At the exact moment you start saying, I love this fucking coin. So the problem for discretionary investors is twofold. One, am I going to be tempted to sell this loser when all it fucking does is cause me pain and goes down? And secondly, I'm going to fall in love with it here and not want to sell it because we sell the things we hate and we, and we keep the things we love. And now I love this thing because it's working. And the third thing that can go wrong is you don't, you, you, you've you never heard of Dot. you never heard of it here. you never heard of it here. And the only time you start hearing it is out here when it's gone through the roof and you think, oh, fuck, I've got to own Dot. And you're late to the party and you buy just in time to get all this bullshit. Anyone ever experienced that? I have. So for the vast majority of its life, it underperformed Bitcoin. And I have, I have some dot right now too. Um, any altcoin is inherently a, a more risky investment than Bitcoin because Bitcoin's been going for 10 years, dot's been going for two years. Like it's, Bitcoin is just an inherently less volatile, more stable investment, um, less likely to go to zero. And taking more risk for less profit isn't smart. So let's look at some others. So this is another one of the, the popular coins, Luna. And in 2020, you can see this was just a terrible thing to own. It declined from like 5,000 Satoshis down to 2,110 um, at the start of the year. I mean, that's, uh, that's down 60, 70%. And then in 2021, it goes from those roughly 2,000 Satoshis up to 18,000 Satoshis. So it goes down 70% and then up 900% and then and then goes back down 30%. So, so it's been a great investment in 2021. 
but it's sheet investment in 2020. Let's look at another one, um, Uniswap, uh, biggest DeFi exchange, everyone's idea of this is the hot girl on campus coin, but look at it for the whole of its life. Terrible investment, going down, going down, going down, going down, the light switch changes and then, and, then, and then it comes good. And where are we compared to Bitcoin? We're only just above where it was two years ago. So uh, we're seeing a trend here. The, the, the game with these fucking things is to not hold them here and hold them here. That's the game. So, I, I mean, I could go on and on, we, but we've got a lot to get through today. But it's, I, I promise you, it's the same story every time. Shitty coin does nothing, does nothing, does nothing, bam. Shitty coin goes through the roof. Idiots come in, stops going through the roof. So there's a, a, a coin which behaves like an index, like an ETF called Crypto20. It's an altcoin index of the top 20 altcoins. And it's a very useful thing to use as a proxy for the altcoin market. So let's look at it over the last couple of years. This is from the end of the old bull market. So you can see that from Lee, it's a giant game of musical chairs. Yes, that is the perfect analogy, my friend. Um, so you can see that these are the top 20 altcoins. And for the vast majority of their life, these were just crappy things to own. And the times when it's better to own altcoins than, than Bitcoin or Ethereum, are these red boxes. So right here, you get a little bear market rally. Right here, you get a little bear market rally. Right here, you get a little bear market rally. A little bear market rally here from May to September 2020. And then you get a, a, a more substantial bull market move after a retest of the lows. So if you're going to be trading altcoins, you hate yourself, oh, it's not so bad. You hate yourself, oh, maybe it's coming good. You hate yourself, oh, science of life, oh, I broke your heart. Oh, maybe it's good, maybe it's good. Oh, no, 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 you're fucked. And then finally, it comes good. This is not a very fun couple of years for anyone trading altcoins. So... Um, for the guys who are deep in the altcoin game, would you agree with this? Like 2018 through 2020 was pretty shit showing signs of life and 2021's been awesome. Is that roughly a, roughly how it's going? Horrid. All right. So the strongest altcoin of this bull market yeah, rich 10x this year. Everyone has. Super easy. Um, me too. So the strongest altcoin of this bull market, who can guess who it is? BNB and SafeMoon, they've both gone through the roof. And most of you have it right. It's fucking Doge. Like, who seriously, with a straight face, in 2019 would have said that Doge would be the strongest performing altcoin in a bull market? Like, who, who picked that? How could you pick that? There's no developers. There's no technology. There's no... It's a ludicrous proposition. Yeah, I guess Musk, Musk started it, but, I mean... It did more than just a one-day pop on a Musk tweet. Like, it's been consistently the strongest. It was supposed to be just a joke, exactly. And yet, for most of its life, Doge is a crappy investment which did nothing. This is Doge over its lifetime. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Just a crappy investment that you'd be glad to see the back of. And then, look at what happened. This is the 2018 peak went past the 2018 peak and went bam. I mean, that's just extraordinary. That's like, just ex like extraordinary growth. So who, who, who thinks that, that 
you might be able to find a systematic method of choosing these things that's better than just guessing. So let's talk about which which type of system that we could that we could consider. So the ones that I considered first, in order that the obvious thing was to consider trend following systems because we get strong trends in crypto. Um, the second one is mean reversion, which I considered uh, from the long side under. You never want to short a, a bull market. And the third type of system I considered were pattern based, which are, which are like most of my current systems. And the final part type of system is momentum systems. So I want to just go through the process of considering. So trend following, typically you use trailing stops. So um, you're buying you're buying a portfolio of things when they when when they reach new highs with a very wide stop, and and you're usually giving back. 30 or 50 percent in 30 percent in bitcoin terms but when bitcoin turns uh, when altcoins turn and, and stop you out bitcoin goes down as well so giving back 60 or 70 percent of winning of profit on winning trades so trend following didn't work and also trend following needs hard stops resting in the marketplace which is problematical with cryptos they can be manipulated into flash crashes and you know we, we've had situations where ethereum's dropped from 300 dollars down to 10 cents in 10 seconds and and you just don't want to leave stop losses in 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 crypto exchanges so the next thing was mean reversion um actually works quite well in crypto from the long side, but it takes very small wins. Uh, and that's not the play. Like the play in crypto is holding a coin from two bucks to 200 bucks. Like that's that's the play. Um, and the real money in crypto is, is holding for the whole bull market, not waiting for a pullback and jumping in. Uh, Eric, yes, I did test my Scalpius system on a long only basis with longer bars and weekly charts. Um, yeah, it's an edge. It's it's a strong edge, but because so so consider it now. Like like this is the setup actually. Like uh, <coughs> so, the type of pattern based system that I'm famous for is wait for a, <coughs> where you wait for a chart pattern setup and then jump in. So the actual aspect of waiting for that setup means that your capital is not deployed all the time. So you're waiting, 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 and then you get five setups in one day. Um, this waiting time, badly suboptimal. So it was a nice smooth equity curve. It was definitely an edge, definitely can make 50 to, to sometimes 100% a year on that. But, you know, we're not going for 100% a year, we're going for 10,000% a year. Um, like, and we really are. So, so, so the type of system that I'm most familiar with, that I'm most expert in, non-starter. In a powerful bull market, you want to be invested the whole time. You want to just ride this fucker to the beach. That's what you want to do. So let's talk about momentum. Momentum is a rigorously tested phenomenon in stock markets. And what it's based on is the idea that winning stocks, the stocks that outperform in the most recent period, are statistically more likely to outperform in the future. Um, there's a, a very famous peer-reviewed paper, um, the, the Jagadish paper, um, you can look it up. The way that this works is because of human nature. Um, human nature is that we like things that make us money and we keep, the, we keep the investments that make us money. We keep the investments that we like, actually, and we sell the investments that we hate. What do we like? What's, you know, if you own Doge, Doge is your favorite shit right now. Like, I'll fucking love my Doge. You'll, you'll pry my Doge from my dead hands because they've made you all this money. You're a millionaire now. So people don't sell the things that they love. And this is human nature. This isn't like some technical analysis thing. And this effect has been observable in stocks for hundreds and hundreds of years. And it's not going to go away because we're just as stupid now as we ever were. So what is momentum? Momentum is the idea that everyone loves a winner. The same way that Amazon took the lead in retail and then kept growing and Facebook took the lead in social media and kept growing and, and Google took the lead in search and kept growing, you know, in the winner take all economy, which I think we'd all agree that, that we have a winner take all economy right now, who would have fucking thought that the winners would actually take everything? Like that's the way it's worked out. Winners just keep winning. So the coins that take the lead have a statistical tendency to streak ahead, at least for a time. So 
this is Doge. This is a, a chart of like I just pulled up a bunch of like popular coins like Vet, Ada, BNB, Doge, Dot, Cheese, Chili's, um, Theta, Luna, Uni, all the popular shit, right? So Doge is the red one. You can see it's the winner. But look way back in time, you would think this is dumb luck, but very early on, see how Doge came out of the gate. This wasn't luck. Doge already tipped its hand that it was strong. Doge is already way ahead of, of way ahead of all these other motherfuckers down here. And you can see Doge, 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 go. Everyone got that? Because that's important to understand that there's always a clue to superior performance and the clue to superior performance is usually early superior performance. Everyone understand that? This is the basis of, this is the whole box of dice for what we're doing today. So, so it's, it's important that we got it. So let's look at the second one, which is Luna. You can see the same thing. Luna came out of the gate very strong. You know, by February, it was already the second strongest coin behind Doge. And look, whatever this green thing was, the third strongest coin ended up finishing number four. You see how this works? Like not every time, but most of the time, winners keep winning. Now let's look at Ada, which is another, you know, um, frankly, it's a pretty decent piece of technology. And you can see it broke out in March, but if we follow this back, you can see you can see it broke out here and then really started to streak ahead. And then it overtook all these others. Briefly challenged Doge. And this is something we see again and again and again. And, and why is it? It's because a coin which starts going up, it attracts fresh buyers because they see it on those top lists. People start boasting about it on Twitter and Reddit, gets more favorable press. People, people start recommending it to their friends. Hey, I own this, I own this whatever coin and it's gone through the roof and you should get on. It's gone, it's gone to the moon. We're all getting rich. You should get some. You should get some there. They tell their friends. And at the same time as that, people who own that coin stop selling it because they've got, it feels like they've got a lottery ticket in the pocket. So no one knows how high this stuff is eventually going to go. Like, you know, Bitcoin could top out at, at, at three or four hundred K. These things could all be trading at above a thousand dollars. You could actually be rich on one. It, it's not impossible that you can get rich on one throw of the altcoin dice. And so no one wants to sell once it starts happening because they think, oh, fuck, we're on here. We're on. Fuck, this is the time. And, you know, most often it's not the time, but, but that's the way people think. And it's really exciting holding that lottery ticket in your pocket you know i you know for example i've i've got a buddy who put four grand into polka dot it became 40 and now he's like thinking ahead wow what if it 10x's again and and this thing could be like a bitcoin challenger or ethereum challenger or or like this thing could go to it's it's at 30 bucks now this could go to two thousand dollars and and how does that change in then if 100 x's from here Wow, he's actually rich, and that's the way he's thinking. Like he's like, like I know he's like I know it's not certain, but wow, what if it happens? I'd actually be rich for turning four grand into four million. Wow, it's it's not impossible. And so he's not going to sell those 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 polka dot coins. Like this guy, I told him when I thought polka dot at top, I thought it's probably time to get you get you diversify your capital a bit. Didn't want to hear it. He's like, nah, loyal. Unlike these hoes, I'm loyal. I'm loyal to polka dot which is retarded um, because the coin doesn't actually know you own it and it's not a football team. It's a fucking investment in a shit coin. So, so when it stops going up, you sell it. But, but I mean, but people are stupid. And this feeds a positive feedback loop. So this is how it works. Prices go up, they attract more buyers, forcing prices up even higher. As it starts to go up, the people who own it think, fuck, I'm not selling that. That's going to the roof, to the moon, fucking Lambos, bro, Lambos. It attracts even more buyers, starts getting more press. And it creates a self-fulfilling and self-defeating wave up. Now, 
I'm pretty sure that all of you would have liked to have owned Doge, Ada, and Luna this year. Um, there's thousands of shit coins, thousands and thousands of them. And there's no shortage of opinions on them either. Like, you know, I mean, sometimes there's only one asshole squirting an opinion, but there's, but, but, but everyone's got an opinion. Um, my point is that relying on simple statistics is easier than doing research. You know, if you did a thousand hours of research and, and those three coins or the coins you own, Dot, Ada and, and, and Luna, like that's really good, but you probably wouldn't. But like the statistics chose Dot, Ada and Luna as your three coins. Like there, there ain't nothing wrong with that. So if you did a thousand hours of research, you'd still end up buying mostly the same coins as a momentum algo is gonna choose for you. Except for one thing that you won't have any bad picks. It's almost impossible for a momentum algo to pick to make a dud pick because dud picks keep going down. So that's the critical thing. So you do your research, you pick 10 coins, and if you're lucky, two of them work out, and you brag about them on Facebook. With momentum systems, maybe you get those two amazing moonshots, maybe you don't, but your average pick is going to be better, but just by not taking any losers at all. You can't take a loser. So a guy called Eugene Farmer, he won the, the 2014 Nobel Prize in Economics for the Efficient Markets Hypothesis. Um, he said that there's exceptions to the Efficient Market Hypothesis and the, the premier exception, the premier edge, the premier anomaly in finance is momentum. So he said he got a Nobel Prize for, for saying the markets are efficient. He said the markets are efficient except for momentum. I can't, I can't explain it. And, and this effect is observable both in individual stocks, across sectors, across whole countries, in both developed and emerging markets, in, in, uh, in stocks, futures, commodities, FX. Everywhere there's buyers and sellers, we see this effect. And a Nobel Prize winner didn't just say it's an edge. He said it was the best edge in all the finance. And so to me, as, as someone who, my primary skill, my what I'm best at in all the world is building trading systems. And building trading systems is fucking tricky. The biggest thing that you can do to avoid the risk of building a crappy trading system is to start with a very strong edge. The best edges are very well documented and you know because hedge funds and banks use them and they've, and they've quant tested them out their ass and, and they're like, there's hundreds of billions of dollars being run already with these edges. And so, especially for crypto where you're dealing with a limited data set, you haven't got hundreds and hundreds of years of data, you've got 10 years of data and really only five years for altcoins. You have to play it safe. And the way to play it safe is by picking an edge that's indisputable, that no one think that you wouldn't find, you can find plenty of people in the world who don't think Elliott Wave's an edge, I think it's garbage. You can find plenty of people who think don't think Dan's an edge, I think it's garbage. You can find plenty of people who probably don't think my own pattern-based systems are an edge or RSI is an edge or stochastics is an edge or pick any sort of technical analysis concept you can't find one professional trader in the whole world who doesn't think momentum's an edge. And so what are we doing when we choose momentum as an edge? We're dropping the risk level down. And that's important. We, we don't necessarily, we don't want to go out on a limb. We don't want to invent the wheel. We don't want to be a pioneer and end up with an arrow sticking out of our, out of our back. Um, we want to do basically the same shit that really rich traders already do successfully and put a spin on it and slightly improve it. So the good news is that when you test it out, the momentum effect is way, way, way stronger in crypto assets than stocks. Um, and this is because crypto investors are really tribal with, and they have lots of biases. So there's these guys who call themselves the XRP army. You post anything bad about XRP and on Twitter, you'll have a hundred Twitter comments saying, saying you're an asshole, you just don't understand XRP is the future of money. Yo. And they believe in that coin. They, they're like football fans. They're like, uh, um, they're like the Millwall fans of crypto. 
So practically, uh, let's, get, let's get in the weeds a bit. So practically, momentum systems are designed to outperform the market. So in a bull market, they're designed to do better than the market. That's what they do. They're not doing anything other than that. So how does it work? Three-step process. First of all, you rank the coins in your universe, and we'll get into ranking methodology in a minute. So you rank them from one through 500. Step two, you start buying the strongest coins in your portfolio until you run out of money. And then three, instead of using stop losses to get out of your coins when they fall beyond a certain amount, you just always hold the strongest coins. So if a coin was going to need to be out of your portfolio, it wouldn't be one of the strongest coins anymore, would it? Like it, 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 it it would naturally fall out of the list of top strongest best coins. So you would sell it anyway and replace it with a, you would replace this, this crappy horse with a better horse. And so in this way, we solve one of the inherent problems with the crypto markets, which is that stop losses are prone to manipulation. Now, the one thing to note is that momentum systems only work in a bull market, only. Do not work in bear markets. They underperform, you get nothing for nothing, so, so a momentum system is a system that outperforms a bull market on the way out and underperforms it on the way down. So obviously, we don't want to trade them on the way down. So, that, so that's it. Like, I mean, that's really it. This is not a complicated thing. Does, it, does anyone need me to go over that or any questions on this up to now? Because I want everyone to get this like solid. Questions? It's very similar to sector rotation. Um, the sector rotation is based on this concept, actually. It's exactly like the Dow. If you if you think about it, the Dow 30 is the top 30 stocks in America, right? It's the if you pick the biggest 30 businesses in America, you're probably going to have 30 winning businesses, right? Like honestly. If you pick the 30 biggest businesses in Somalia, they're probably, you're probably going to have 30 winning businesses. Stefan, so you're just moving coins to top performance. Yes, that's all we're doing. Very, very simple and robust concept. Hold the shit that's working. So what do we need? We need a ranking methodology and we need a trend filter. And some other advantages, no day trading, no sitting in front of the screen, no intraday entries, you're going to enter these once a week. No technical analysis, no chart formations to watch for, no watching the screen. So these become very, very simple, simple things to execute. So they're delightfully low skill. Um, if any of you feel like um, the Forex system, which I trade, is a little bit difficult, yeah, I feel you, bro. Um, this is not like that. Um, the Forex system is a high degree of skill, high degree of difficulty. It's a professional day trading scalping system. It's, it is what it is. Um, but crypto systems with momentum, they're so simple. Like, um, shit, my accounts were at half a million bucks before I even actually noticed they were at a half a million, from 70 to half a million bucks. I didn't even notice. Like, it was like, I just... You know, did a weekly call and 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 did the execution, and then and the next week put it all in my spreadsheet. Didn't even check, and then then before I knew it, bam. I mean, that was just the market doing what it does. But so there's one catch. Um, it only works in bull markets, which I've said several times now. And we obviously have a bull market right now. So a couple of years ago, I was uh, I was paid by some stock traders to design a, uh, a momentum system for. Them. It's part of the system building masterclass. If any of you guys have that, you can see the rules and the code is there. So you can see the, the, the red line down here is the, is the S&P 500 performance, which it was designed to be. You can see how thoroughly and completely this thing kicked the S&P 500 does. 2006% in 15 years. But more importantly, when it hits the trend filter and the trend filter in this system was so stupid. It was like a, it was a 200 period simple moving average and a hundred period individual stock filter. So you, it wouldn't buy any individual stock if the stock was below the hundred period moving average and it wouldn't buy any stock at all if the market was below the 200 period moving average. 
dumbest, simplest shit I could come up with. Very, very robust. And you do this. It flat, so it just goes to cash as soon as you see a bear market. And then when that bear market is over, you just jump back in and continue the music. So Richard says, um, what is your strategy in a bear market? The strategy in a bear market is just not to trade. Honestly, there are easier ways to make money than shorting. And, and sure, I could have I could have done some curve fitting bullshit and like, oh, we're going to short this when it gets to here. And, and yeah, that will probably work. But my opinion, shorting runaway bull markets can be extremely dangerous. And 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 I, you know, people are talking crazy numbers with this stuff, like like. Honestly, there are easier ways. There are, there are better markets to short than, than crypto. So my idea, wait till crypto gets to the top, cash out. You're going to be in cash for a year, a year and a half, maybe two years, and then just get back on and play the game again. No problem. Okay, so when the trend filter triggers, you go to cash, and you can see what happened here. Your equity curve just flatlines. This was in, if you look at the dates, this is January, January 2008 in, yeah, just after, at the start of 2008, and just went to cash. Uh, Bong, I'll get, to, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, obviously, for our trend filter, we're going to use some of the on-chain metrics we discussed in the last webinar. And, and we're going to dive really deep on this in the next webinar because um, they're just better than moving averages and stuff like that. So today I want to talk about ranking the coins. So in the in the stock world, um, this argument is settled. There's actually, you know, you can Google peer-reviewed um, papers on momentum, and they all stay the same. The best ranking methodology for stocks is 90-day linear regression line slopes, excluding the last 30 days. So we're going to go into that a bit. So the vast majority of hedge fund and investment bank systems, and I polled all my ex-students and people I know who are, who are uh, in that pro side of the world. And I asked them to ask their peers about rules for momentum system ranking. And everyone came back with the same fucking thing. Like all these guys are doing the same thing. They don't use technical analysis. And the standard ranking methodology is taking the slope of a linear regression. line. So a linear regression line isn't a technical analysis line. It's not like a... Uh, uh, it's not like a trend line. What it is, is a line of best fit. So it's the line, if you if you choose the spot, you can draw a line that's closest to all the points on the line. This is like right in the middle of everything, right? That's what it is. It's a mathematical line of best fit and it's calculated by formula. Uh, it, it's called the least squares method. Uh, you can, uh, I learned it in primary school, I couldn't do it now. Um, but if you Google, if you go to Khan Academy and, and Google linear regression, um, there'll be a, a basic tutorial on it. I just right click and go linear regression line on my charting package. So anyway, so the idea is this is a line of best fit and we look at the slope of that line. A steeper line is a stronger coin. The steepest lines are going vertical. So they're by definition, the strongest coins, right? That's how it works. So what do the professionals use? And that's probably a, a starting point. That's where I started my research. And so the standard ranking methodology for stocks is the slope of a 90-day linear regression line, but, but excluding the last 30 days of data. And the reason for, for that excluding, it's very important because there's a short-term mean reversion effect. When things get overstretched, people take profits and then it temporarily bumps. And then, I mean, that's what a bull market is. Gets overstretched, people take some profits, and then and then and then goes up again. People take some profits. That's why a trend is a series of high highs and high lows. Okay, well, so you can see here. This is the linear regression line here, and then it went sideways for a while, and then it moved. This is a coin that we actually held called Matic, um, and you can see why excluding the mean reversion period makes sense, right? Like if you just did a line overall, this would be a very low line here and, and you wouldn't have caught it. So when I started testing, I thought that the standard stock, stock ranking, which is 90 excluding the most recent 30, would probably need to be shortened. 
And so I tested 90 days, excluding the recent 30. I tested 60 days, excluding the recent 20. And I tested 45 days, excluding the recent 15. And, uh, and, and put in the chat which one you think won. Okay, most people are choosing 45, which is correct. So this one was, was a clear winner, but it's important to note that all of them were profitable, even the 90 days excluding 30. So the big danger when you're building any trading system is that you've curve fitted it and you've got this overcomplicated bullshit Rube Goldberg machine that looks great in the past, but falls apart when you put real money in. That's the number one danger, and that's what you have to avoid. And one, there's a couple of tricks that experienced system designers use to avoid these problems. And the biggest trick is that you're looking for, if I had, if 90 days was shit, 60 days was shit, and 45 days was amazing, I think they were all shit. What you're looking for is a decent number in a forest of decent numbers. You're not even necessarily looking for the best the best optimized parameter, you're looking for where are all the parameters around that pretty good. I, I don't necessarily need 45 excluding 15 to be the best. Actually, we settled on something else, but it was, but, but around, I want around those numbers to all be pretty good. I don't want it to come down to, to some super special snowflake market for me to make money because that doesn't happen. And the future and the past, they rhyme, they don't repeat. Uh, to clarify, no, it's, it's uh, what what I started testing and what I started training was linear re regression from 45 days excluding the most recent 50, or 45 days excluding the most recent 15. So that's uh, an actual 30 days of linear regression. I actually changed that a little bit later when we did our final optimization. We, um, it's a seven day market and we settled on 49 days excluding the most recent 14. So that all reasonably chosen parameters are profitable. That's one of the, that's one of my, um, that's one of my big questions when people bring me trading systems and say, is, is my system legit? So, okay, well, let's, let's change the parameters around. Let's throw some different numbers in. Anything that's not like stupid should give you a positive result. Even if it's not amazing, you shouldn't, ha you shouldn't have any fails. You're looking for a forest of good numbers, not one standout because a stand one standout number can be random dumb luck. Um, 49 days excluding the most recent 14 was slightly better. And, and it makes a bit more logical sense because crypto is a, a seven day market. One thing I want to say really clearly is don't get hung up on the detail. If 49 days works and, and, and 52 days doesn't work, your whole idea sucks. Okay, question from Jens. Would there be any value in comparing the slope of the last 90 days and the last 100 days and get an idea of uh, the mean reversion? Let me think about that. There's better ways to, uh, there's better ways to measure mean reversion. You'd probably be better off um, doing an augmented uh, Dickey Fuller test or some sort of co-integration math to work out how mean reverting um, the time series is. And, uh, but then you wouldn't be comparing apples and apples. You know, I mean, the whole idea is that we're comparing apples and apples. It could work. I'm not saying it wouldn't work, but um, the performance is so strong that we don't need to get cute with this. Like, like honestly, we don't need to get cute. And from Jens, you need a stationary time series. Though. Yeah, of course you do. But I mean, you can do that. Um, so I started off trading this with just a couple of small accounts. Um, Chris, that's a really good question. He asked, best success has been trading daily charts, not hourly, four hourly. No, um, uh, there is so much noise to signal in crypto. Um, individual buyers actually move the market. Um, I wouldn't, I never even look at hourly charts, except sometimes on execution, I have a quick look. Um, daily, and pro, daily and weekly are where it's at. I use daily. Um, yeah, I, at the, if, if you think about it logically, the big money is in the big move in crypto. You're trying to, you, you, 
you're not you're not trying to get little daytime wiggles. There are easier and more reliable markets to play that game in. Euro US dollar is a much better game to play intraday than than crypto. It's just a it's just too, the right is too wild. So I started off trading um, a couple of small accounts, and and really the purpose was only just to make me put some skin in the game and just not um, just make me not fuck around. You you know like. If I've got real money in it, I have to take it, take it seriously. My spreadsheets have to be up to date, blah, blah, blah. And I committed to doing it live on Zoom calls on Saturday mornings. And a bunch of people turned up every week and traded along and and, and more just to keep me accountable than anything else. And so what I did is I had a, a program spit out our ranking methodology every week. And I would, you know, select the, select the ranking stuff, right click, copy, and then paste it into a Google spreadsheet and then go to data, sort range and sort it. And I would do the sort, and then I would do the position sizing manually from first principles without formulas, um, so that I internalized it at a very deep level. And this was literally the simplest, dumbest shit that I could do. And and I often do that when I'm building trading systems is work on what I call the minimum viable trading system, the simplest, dumbest shit you can do that actually works. And so I would, you know, sort all these, and then okay, these are the ones I have to buy, and then and then you know. Do my position sizing. I was using volatility weighted position sizing then, which we'll get onto. Um, and you know, it's a keep this one and uh, keep this these two and sell these two. And these are the number of coins. And this is uh, I would do this every week. And doing the development with a spreadsheet instead of with an automated program it gives me a real down in the weeds feel for how it's gonna how it's gonna play out. Um, and because there isn't a hundred years of crypto data, it's important to keep it stupid simple. And the biggest danger in, in designing trading systems is always overfitting. So it makes total sense to start with a minimum system. And so I took another precaution against curve fitting. And, and that's the big danger, right? Uh, Tony, actually, it, it, all days of the week are positive, uh, but um, Sunday is a bad day. Um, Sunday is still positive, of, of course. But uh, Sunday is prone to larger market moves because the market is thinner there. And I personally, I, I used to execute it on Sunday, but I found that even though technically it doesn't make any difference, if say, let's say the market is in the process of falling, you know, you're buying, you're selling this coin and, and your profit is evaporating, but you're buying this other coin cheaper. Like technically it doesn't make a difference, but the feeling of how it felt to me to sell this coin and then rebuy in a fast moving market. Um, I didn't like that. I found, I found it uh, more stressful than it needed to be. So, um, so anyway, so we're executing Mondays now and, uh, and all days of the week are positive. So, so the, the precaution I took against curve fitting was I developed a system on Binance exchange data. I never even looked at any other exchanges. And I did this on purpose. We call this out of sample data. Uh, it's a concept from a, a, a quant trader called Bob Pardo. And so later on, when we finished the system, we took that set of rules and then we plugged it into every other exchange we could find. And it's profitable on every exchange, just a, a question of degree. And that gives me a huge amount of confidence. In it. Like that tells me that we're probably on a winner. So anyway, so I was lucky and the market turned into old season. And, and honestly, it wasn't, it wasn't me, like there's plenty of guys with 10X to crypto portfolio in the chat here today. Like I'm not saying it's because my system was amazing. It's just because the system was choosing reasonably strong coins in a very exceptionally strong market phase. And, and it 13, 12 X the account or something in really quick time. And uh, uh, John G, was any Monte Carlo's testing done? Monte Carlo testing is a bad, bad, bad idea because in the real world, Monte Carlo testing assumes that your distribution of results is normal, but your distribution of results is far from normal. Your returns either, your returns, your returns cluster. So what happens is, um, let's say your win rate is 65%. Your, you should never statistically see 15 losers in a row, but you will see that because your losers and your winners all bunch together. Um, so anyway, so I was lucky and, and, and I pulled out um, 420 on this account, another, uh, another 50 on another account. Um, 50. 
Maybe not quite. Hang on, I'll check. Anyway, so I, uh, um, I pulled out what for me is the largest withdrawal I've ever withdrawn off a trading account ever. Like um, the previous biggest withdrawal trading, like I've managed to feed myself off my trading accounts and my and and provide my family's life and and you know lived off it for many years, but um, and grow my accounts too. But the largest withdrawal I ever made from a trading account before that was a hundred grand to pay for my wedding and. Uh, and you know, I'm not out like so. So for me, anyway, it was this amazing thing that holy fuck, you know, after all these years, you can actually take a big chunk of money. Not it's not just one way. You're not just putting money into this shit now. Now you're actually pulling out. Like for me, it was just a game changer. And and I would have made more letting it ride. But but really, the system at this stage was just a tinker toy hobby system, and it wasn't good enough back then to be trading that kind of size. And I I recognised that I just got lucky and and yeah. So let's recap. Momentum systems work by one, you check the trend filter and you only buy when you're in a bull market phase. As soon as the, as soon as the market is out of a bull phase, you're not buying anything. So, so you, step two is you rank the coins and you buy the strongest first until you run out of money. We're, we're gonna get to position sizing and different options for that uh, in the next webinar, it's super complicated. Um, Luda, uh, you're absolutely right. The uh, you don't want to be the big money in crypto is holding for the whole bull market. So uh, I mean that's that's what it is. Um, you you you've missed some pretty important parts. So when I send the the um, uh, when I send the recording out, you should watch the first bit. Okay. So we rank the coins. We buy the strongest until you run out of money. And and number three is you check once a week just once a week, it actually doesn't improve performance doing it any more frequently. I know someone's gonna ask that. And you sell any that aren't in your list and you buy new ones. And I'm gonna go deep into the detail of, of exactly how this works on the next webinar, but I don't want you to get hung up on the exact parameters. If you need to get the parameters right to make money, your system and your idea probably sucks. So uh, let's take some questions now. Um, yeah, questions. Any coins you want me to, you know, check the data and check whether whether the system owned them and when it bought them and all that kind of stuff. Like, happy to do all that. All right, questions. David, how did you determine your universe? Very interesting. So um, I started off with a, uh, a minimum market cap that I thought would make them tradable because some of these small altcoins are, uh, are too small. I thought originally that smaller altcoins would have more upside potential and more beta and they would make more money. It actually turns out that unequivocally, the larger cap coins uh, are a better universe. So the uh, we tested many, many, many different universes, which I'll get into tomorrow, uh, get into on the next webinar, but the optimal universe was actually the universe that is traded across multiple exchanges. And it appears that there's a strong edge in, there's a strong edge when a coin gets listed on a big exchange, like it gets listed on Binance and then all of a sudden more people see it, it's got more buyers and blah, 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 blah. And so the, the intersection of the coin list on the big exchanges was actually optimal, which it, which was an amazing piece of, uh, of research. Uh, Luda, can we get involved now? No, you have to wait until I launch the thing. Um, Ryan, do you have a predefined percentage allocation within the top 20? I'll get into that, but um, uh, uh, it's 20%. Um, we'll, talk, we'll talk about it in the next webinar. Yeah, it'll, it'll literally definitely be before the next board run. It'll be like within the next week. So uh, I talked about on-chain metrics last time, Chris. If you watch the uh, if if you watch the first uh, if you watch the first webinar, um, that's the that's the thing. So the on-chain metrics are, are most useful for trend filters. You can you can with a high with a high degree of reliability, you can say, are we in a bull or a bear market phase? And, uh, and there's a number of different ways to do that. Um, 
yeah, and it's just much better than technical analysis, honestly. Uh, Stu, how do you take profit? Because you need to find an asset like a fiat, fiat currency or a tether that might be a crappy performing asset. At the end of the bull market, you switch out to cash. So at that point, you either switch out to tethers and switch your tethers to real money, or you trade with an exchange like Coinbase or CoinSpot in Australia or, or Kraken or any of the ones that do real money trading. So there's two types of exchanges. There's ones that don't do fiat and there's ones that do. Um, Wayne, it's not that Sunday was a bad day. Sunday was slightly underperforming, but I've, I've found, I've, I've been trading this thing. So what I found is that there was a couple of uh, very ugly Sundays in terms, of, in terms of price action. And I personally found executing my own system a little bit stressful on Monday. Um, um, and why not get in on Monday and out on Saturday? Because you want to hold for seven days. You don't want to hold for five days. You want to hold for seven days. If you're holding it, if you if you if you get in on on Monday and out on Saturday, then we've got a five day cycle, and there's no advantage to holding quicker. In fact, unequivocally, longer is better. Um, same investment in each of the coins. Yes. Uh, surprisingly, yes. ENJ BTC. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at ENJ BTC. Okay, so that's a bullish chart formation. But if we look at, actually, let's do it like this. Let's compare. ENJ Okay, where is ENJ coin? I might have to hide this to see it, it might be sorting the scale. ENJ. Oh, let me just put it up here. ENJ BTC. Okay, so ENJ is pretty strong. It's certainly been in our ranking methodology, but you can see it started to outperform pretty early, like way back here it was outperforming, and this is the clue to its future performance, right? So that's how this stuff works, is before something goes through the roof, you get a little clue, you get a little clue, you get a little clue. You know, before this one went, it, you get a little clue. All right. Um, Richard O'Sullivan, never traded or owned a coin, open account with independent reserve. Independent reserve is totally good. I've, I've used them a lot. Shane, which exchanges can we use? I, I built the system for Kraken, Binance, Binance US, Coinbase, and Bittrex, um, which are the biggest exchanges. And... Uh, David, do you filter by market cap? No, I'm not doing any market cap filtering in the final version. Um, I started out with a market cap filter and I found that the market cap filter was unsatisfying. Um, I, I found that, uh, um, you know, coins with a couple of hundred, with, with, with a billion dollar market cap um, still didn't have adequate liquidity. And I found coins with a small market cap had plenty of liquidity. I found, um, to put it in plain language, I, I found that the um, some of the data from exchanges looks like bullshit to me. It's all fake. Um, Simon, what about Nexo? Let's have a look at Nexo. Nexo, right here. Let's uh, let's make it dark so we can see it. All right, so this dark line is Nexo. And if we go back, you can see Nexo was very back in the pack until here it starts to go. You know, by, by early April, you've seen signs of a future winner. 
and then it, and, and then it goes up. Yeah, this is next item. Um, do I take correlation into account? Uh, I did in the system development. I don't in the end. Uh, that's another thing I'm going to explain tomorrow. Let me. Uh, Coin correlations. So this is a uh, a correlation between. This is a correlation matrix that I put together. So you can see that Bitcoin, it, uh, um, the average correlation between between coins is is thirty three percent. Um, George, what do you think of Red Fox or Alice? I don't even know. Like, I'm not the guy to ask you about that. I'm a fucking retard. Like, I built, I built trading systems. I don't. I'm, I'm on a very strict news diet, so I don't know anything about. Uh, like, I know the basics, but but I'm not that guy that's like on Reddit telling you about the technology behind the thing. I'm a fucking retard. Let's uh, let's look at GoBTC, which is the last one. And it's again this, and you can see it was a pretty ordinary performer until early April, and now it's crushed it. Um, yeah. All right, guys, um, any more questions? Oh, yeah, we've got a couple of more questions. So probably only hold five or six coins at a time yet. Yeah, six, uh, five coins is, is, uh, is, about, is about right. Uh, you can't trade Binance because you live in the US. Coinbase has has the same data. You can also trade Binance.us. Um, definitely can trade this from the US. That was one of my uh, that was one of my prime. Uh, uh, that was one of my prime things. All right. Um, okay. Any more questions before we kill us? All right, guys. And uh, next webinar, we'll go. Uh, we'll go deep into uh, uh, deeper <laughs> again. Um, yeah, guys. This is to me. This is turning into a lot of fun. Um, this is the easily the most interesting trading system project I've ever worked on. Um, my opinion is that I, we're trying to do something which I've never done in my life. Like I've, I've traded and lived through several bull markets and I've never taken full advantage. You know, we're in, we're, we're 12 years into a stock bull market and I'm not a stock trader. And I got none of that. I got none. I watched from the sidelines while all my stock trading buddies got rich. Um, I didn't make out like a bandit in the last crypto bull market. It's definite, it's definitely a bull market. There's no doubt in the world that we have a bull market and with a mania like this, the, shit, the music doesn't stop until everyone owns coins. You know, we're still in, it seems like we've gone too far too fast and we have, but really we're just getting started. This thing will not stop until, until, you, until all your parents are calling you buying coins and everyone you know has a coin portfolio Wall Street's in on the action, and you know, the, just one time in my life, I'd like to be able to ride one of these right up to the top, and I've never done it before. And if I look at, it, I think I'm a good trader, and this is time to test myself. And so, can I really do this? Can I really pull a great fortune, like a big ass chunk of money, out of this thing and ride this wave all the all the way to the beach? And then, can I cash out at the perfect time? I've never done it before, and to me. I can't call myself a world-class trader until I've done that. And, and, and for me, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to be. It's, it's who I am. I'm a world-class trader and I'd like to invite you to trade along with me and, and do exactly the same thing as I'm doing and make a shitload of money along with me and cash out right at the time and experience none of that bear market bullshit. And that's what I'm trying to do. So yeah, it's as simple as that. See you soon, guys.